Hey guys, welcome to Bada Boom. This is Chris. I'm here with Mike to talk about the new Fallout series. Both of us have watched the first three episodes and we have thoughts, particularly Mike, because Mike, I've known Mike for at this point, maybe like 15 years. And ever since I've known him, he's been a Fallout fan. So I know he was super excited and I know he loved this show. So Mike, what did you think of the new Fallout series? Well, uh, it's true. Loved I have it. been a Fallout <laughs> let me put it every this second way. You know of how, you know yeah. you know how the show starts with the title card that says the end you know yeah. that do you catch that it starts well by the time i got to the end of the third episode i wish that were true <laughs> I, I really i i wish they hadn't had lied to me and that the show just starts with the end and that's it we don't have to watch anything that's uh, if i could sum up my thoughts uh, succinctly that that would be it uh it's what's like weird said, is have, uh you know yeah. like this is um just based on sort of the initial reaction people have uh been kind of universally praising it and i'm like what show are they watching in my like and i just finished the fourth episode and i was like you know i'm still waiting for it to like hit you know and you know this is brought to us by you know jonathan nolan you know the dark knight uh westworld and if you've seen westworld this makes sense because westworld the first season and the only good season is really kind of like bad for about like seven episodes and then the twist hits at the end and then it makes you forget that the show was drugging along the whole time so maybe it'll hit when you get to the end but for me I, i'm in the same spot and i'm not a a fallout person i i watch the show and i'm like oh there's some of the member berries there's the iconography and stuff like that but i'm like i don't know um why nolan insists on doing these like three protagonist structures where they and meet at some point because not one of these characters i like <laughs> not to say that you're supposed to like people in the the apocalypse but all of it is just happening and i'm like oh like hey i'm just waiting for the next per point where you know walt goggins just you know shoot someone's head off because that's the only good parts i found in this show yeah it's it's an interesting approach because if, by the time the second episode begins we're following four main characters and they're all equally uninteresting so it's difficult to flesh out your characters when they're boring and you're constantly jumping between them. I was a little surprised by that. I thought they would at least stick with the characters for, you know, like a little a little more time so we could get to know them a little bit better, maybe get attached to them. But you know, I'm not a writer, so so what do I know? Maybe maybe <laughs> this is the correct way to do it. But overall, I would say with a show like this cuz obviously like you said, you're not a Fallout fan, I'm a Fallout fan. So it's it's an interesting way to review the show when you have one person who's just completely on the outside looking in and then another you know like me who's who's, who's obviously very much into the uh, the material that the show was based on it was interesting to me because the entire hook of the fallout game is, games is making choices you know they're rpgs and seeing those the seeing the effect those choices have on the world around you and all of that is lost in a TV show because a TV show obviously is linear. You don't get to make any choices. So it's to me the, just the whole, the entire idea of making a Fallout show is kind of a no go right from the start. But it's particularly bad when you have Nolan saying that he didn't want to make a show for Fallout fans. And I think I think his his general kind of statement was that if you're making a show based on something, you shouldn't even try to appeal to the fans. And I think that's the complete completely wrong way of going about it i mean you know we have that other show the the halo show and that has the same exact philosophy where they just hate the fans they don't care so my question is if, if you're not a fan and you don't care about the fans then why why are you in charge of the show like you're obviously not the right person for the job and it's blatantly obvious from the finished product so it's just interesting to me that this is the kind of philosophy that you know now it's really more than just these two shows but that there's just so like open about it where they're just openly have disdain for the source material and it's very confusing to me i you know i don't understand that i think if you're going to make a show you don't necessarily have to be super duper into it because that's not really a good thing either you want someone who's kind of middle of the road the example i always use is uh justin lynn and he directed that uh, star trek beyond film and that was basically like a perfect blend of someone who's not too much in the material but obviously respects the source material and you know a lot of people had issues with the uh the, the first two star trek movies the jj abrams directed ones 
and then even hardcore Star Trek fans enjoyed Star Trek Beyond for what it was. So I don't I don't like this this approach that's been that's been going around. And I don't know if um, the show's creators, because Jonathan Nolan was like the director, and the show was created by uh, Graham Wagner, who wrote uh, for The Office and Silicon Valley. Which is weird, because I, I, I was like, you know, I, I would think this would be funnier. <laughs> there's, there's, that's the that's the thing because I think you know Fallout part of it you know is, is sort of that like almost like Verhoeven like humor that's in it you know um, where in this it, it isn't funny um, and the characters like you said are are kind of dull like um, like Lucy the main character I what's interesting is the most interesting part of the show is the stuff that happens in the vault which is the opposite I'd assume of the game where you get out of the vault and you're just exploring. And obviously it's an RPG and you're building things in these episodes. She has not grown at all. And what was weird was like, they showed like a montage of her training for the day that eventually maybe she gets out of the vault. And I'm like, wait, like she doesn't use any of these skills at all. <laughs> so I thought they were setting it up so that she'd be a badass when she got out. She doesn't use a gun, uses like a dark gun. Um, same things with, with Walt Goggins. You're like, oh, he's going to be like a villain. You know what I mean? This like, you know, almost like Terminator like character. And then by episode three, you could kind of see they're setting up like, oh, he'd be like a friend and sort of like, you know, he's he's got a heart of gold probably deep down there somewhere. And then you very know, the original, very original. Yeah. I've never seen that done before. Then the, um, you know, uh, the Max character, you're like, this kid is an idiot. Why would they even make him a sire? Why would he be the second choice? So, so like, there's all these, like, like all three of them, you're like, I don't, I really don't care. The, the most interesting character to me so far is actually Lucy's brother, because he's the only one that kind of has, like, any agency and is like, hey, like, what's going on in that other vault? Like... You know what I mean? Like, he's the only one that I feel like has, like, any, like, opinion or, you know, um, what can be done. But, yeah, the, the show just seems like it's um, it, it's hitting all the, like, hey, this is something you remember from the game, right? Like, here's the cockroaches. Here's that. Here's this. Um, but none of it is, like, particularly engaging where, like, I literally, I, I texted you, like, during the third episode, my son woke me up. I literally fell asleep during, <laughs> and you know, in a in a show that costs this much and has this kind of like hook of like post apocalypse, like I shouldn't be falling asleep during it. You know what I mean? Like the the criticisms I had about the last of the show, you know, I never fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 exactly right. I mean, I didn't quite fall asleep, but I was. The issue for me is is when I'm not engaged, I start my my eyes start to wander. And I start to notice things that people would uh, describe as being nitpicky. So I, for example, one of the things that I really noticed, just how bad the show looks just from like a technical perspective. I don't, I don't know what it is, but everything just looks like a TV set. It's the really harsh lighting, especially like inside the vault. It's like blatantly obvious that they're on a set. And it's also, even when they're outside, you just have like this very kind of, tv show-ish feel to it it doesn't very it doesn't feel very natural and that 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 kind of stuff bothers me because it really ruins the atmosphere and the experience especially for something like this where it's supposed to be set in the post-apocalypse and it just feels like too clean even though they try to make it dirty with all the stuff that's all around but then like the the brotherhood knights their armor it it's blatantly obvious that that's plastic you know that's supposed to be metal it's supposed to be like kind of grimy you know it's this this armor is really old it's pre-war so this armor is basic this, this armor is like 200 years old at this point and it just looks super polished it just it doesn't look right and again i wouldn't normally complain about stuff like this if the show is engaging because i just don't notice it but because i'm not engaged i'm bored i'm noticing all of these things that uh that i normally wouldn't even if i did notice them i wouldn't be complaining about them like I'll give you, I'll, I'll just give you a quick example. The Pip Boys radiation meter is always on. Like it's shown late in the later episodes that it's always on. It's always picking up background radiation. So why didn't it immediately detect the radiation from the people when those when the vault door opened? And then later on, when she's in the room with the guy, she takes out her Pip Boy and it starts going off, saying that he has radiations. Like why didn't it immediately do that? 
And also, why did the Raiders go through the whole rigmarole at all? Like, why didn't they just start shooting as soon as that door opened? <laughs> oh, that's right, because the writers don't know how to create suspense. It was it was so blatantly obvious that the people from the other vault were bad guys. I thought it was like a red herring. I thought the twist was going to be that they aren't bad guys at all, and that something else was going to happen. But it's like, oh no, they're just they're just evil. Like, oh okay. And it's just it just kept compounding and like even like they have that they you know she notices that something's wrong and they have that mm. fight inside the vault i like how in the middle of all that chaos the raiders took the time to change their outfits like they took their vault suits <laughs> off and they put all the mad max gear on like what they're, they're in the middle of a fight why are they doing that so all of this stuff was just bothering me constantly throughout the throughout the show and yeah, it just wasn't it just wasn't a very good experience. Yeah, you know, and and you brought up like Halo and you know, I think sort of like to bring that show up and and you know, some people were on Twitter was like, "Hey, this is how you do it, Halo." And I'm like, "Hey, they they took hints from this cuz I think Halo sort of like focuses on the wrong things. Um in, in Halo like what's really cool like sometimes like uh, occasionally like on TikTok it will come up and I'm like, wow, the action looks really good. It seems like they nailed this. I'm like, this Halo show. And then I'm reminded, I'm like, "Wait, this is the same Halo show I hate. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there are like little bits and pieces where you're like, hey, if you kind of pulled on that thread, that would be interesting. If you pulled on this thread, it would be interesting. But the show like sort of fought, like falters because it it sort of like, it, it is weird the way, way it's shot. And because it feels the need to kind of give like stories to these these areas, like the the, it should just be Lucy. Like that should be the show. And then, hey, along the way, you find a goal, you know, along the way, you know, the Brotherhood of Steel, like these things should just happen. Not everyone needs a, you know, a tragic backstory as to why they do the things they do, particularly in a post-apocalyptic world. Like, hey, like that's the the genius of sort of like the humor of Fallout or like for Hoven movies and stuff like that. Like you don't need all that. It doesn't need to be The Last of Us, um, especially when it's only eight episodes like I'm so shocked. I'm watching, you know, I just kind of got into episode four. I'm like, this story still hasn't moved ahead. You know, it's like, hey, I'm going to get my father. And it's like, I feel like they're in the same exact spot they were. There's nothing like that's been revealed or, or sort of like teased out as to why, like, this is particularly interesting. And I hope, you know, it has a Westworld like twist where you're like, oh, like this all connects. And then they never ne make another season because, you know, like that was basically all Westworld was, was that one twist. <laughs> um, but yeah, even as a, as someone that was always like, hey, like I never had 100 hours to play Fallout. I was like, hey, like I always was interested in the world and, you know, was excited to kind of see what they brought with this show, um, you know. But, you know, hey, I didn't I didn't watch Lord of the Rings. It, it's weird. I do think the the tide is turning on video game stuff. Like, I don't think this is like the worst thing I've ever seen. You know, like some video game adaptations have been. Um, but I do think we are inching towards better adaptations. I don't know if we get to like the golden age, like with superhero movies and stuff like that, you know, which has, you know, died down. Um, but I will say there are some like, you know, redeemable qualities. But if you're someone like yourself, that's a fan of Fallout. I don't know if this is the thing you've been waiting for. But, you know, what do I know? Everyone on the internet seems to be praising it. But, you know, you know, we're all a hive mind. Yeah, definitely for me, it's it's a it's a no-go. I, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who's not a Fallout fan because it's just not interesting enough. The main thing that makes Fallout interesting is the world. The Fallout world is, it is humorous. There is humor to be found there. In a satirical way, it satirizes the world and, and the environment. The, the, the characters that are in the world are serious, but it's the world around them that's silly. And I didn't really get that here. Fairly obvious that they don't really understand the source material. And because of that, I wouldn't recommend it to fans of the games either, because you know, you're gonna see a lot of stuff that's in the games, but it's just, like you mentioned earlier, member berries. It's just, oh, you know, here's this thing that you saw in the games. Like, okay, but it doesn't add anything to the experience and you're not doing anything with it. So why should I care? And none of the stuff, like you said, sort of like 
you know, brings things to life in, in an interesting way that you wouldn't get like, hey, like, you know, those uh, vault tech bobbleheads and stuff like that. People have that as Funko Pops. Like, I don't need <laughs> there's something you need to bring to the show that people don't have. Like, you know, uh, they're, you know, all their devices. I'm like, hey, like, I, I've seen that. Like, if you have like Fallout 4, the deluxe edition, you have one of those at home. So, you know, there's nothing that I feel like even as an outsider that I'm like, hey, like this would bring that to life in an interesting way. The same way you would watch um certain things um just to kind of see it like brought to life you're like hey like like you said part of the the beauty of fallout is actually because it's a rpg is you know sort of making those choices but these characters aren't making choices they're just like hey like i'm given a task like i guess i'm gonna follow it and stuff like that um so yeah i i, I really sort of um was not in, impressed by anything really in the show like i said there's some things i guess mainly because i think i get i really like you know walt goggins and you know in this latest episode you know i heard heard matt barry's voice from what we do in the shadows so i'm like and you know the dark knight is one of my all-time favorite movies so i'm like i want to like this but there's it's, like i said you know uh, even as a dad you know it is surprising when i fall asleep to watch something because i'm like hey i only get to watch a few things um uh, every once in a while so for me to fall asleep during the day not even like at night like i fell asleep like middle of the day just tells you how much is not going on yeah and you know you mentioned uh, walton goggins and he's also a, an actor that i very much enjoy but he, you have this you have this phenomenal actor who has like a very distinct face and you just plaster him with this crappy makeup that doesn't even make him look like a ghoul if, if you if you've played the games you know what ghouls look like they don't look like what Walton Goggins look like, but you know, whatever, that's fine. What yeah. really bothers me is his awkward CGI nose. Every time there's a close up on him, I'm reminded of Superman's weird upper lip in Justice League, <laughs> where you can like, it's like clearly CGI'd out and it's incredibly distracting. So that's just another one of those things that, oh, and speaking of close ups on him, I don't know if you noticed this when he had that, uh, that shootout, you know, the shootout he does in the, in the town. Where yeah. he's literally standing in the middle of the town square and there are 15 people around him all shooting at the shoot same him. time <laughs> and they can't hit him yeah th that's that's this that's the scene that i'm talking about yeah I'm, I'm not i'm not a professional cameraman but the dp at one point i don't know if you noticed this but at one point they're doing like a low angle shot of his head and they're just pointing the camera directly at the sun it's like blinding and at <laughs> first i thought it was a mistake but then they they cut to a different shot and they cut back to the same shot and they point the camera at the sun again and i couldn't believe it i was like why are why are they doing this like the reason you don't point the camera directly at the sun is because the audience can't see anything when you do that i just there's i, I don't know man i don't i don't i i think this is this is uh an instance where the people who made the show just didn't give a shit they just didn't give a shit they just like oh you hey jonathan uh you're, you're gonna make a fallout show oh okay i'll, I'll do that and they got these other two people who also seemingly don't care to, to to create the show and write it and this is what you get if that's good enough for you i guess that that's fine but it's definitely not good enough for me so yeah yeah um i'm in the the, the same boat where like i said you know it seems to be getting good reviews i don't know why again to me it's it's not engaging it's it's boring and like you said when those things happen you start to nitpick and pull on certain things and you're like well this is like super shallow and doesn't have certain things especially with some of the talent involved you'd hope that they'd give them more to do um and i think really like in walt goggins case they're just relying on sort of like his natural charisma to kind of pull through but it's like hey like they're called ghouls for a reason and not given names <laughs> so it's like maybe like look for another area to kind of give like life to in certain things um, but yeah, I'm in the same boat. I feel that um, Amazon seems to be throwing a lot of money at certain things just because unlike Mar like Disney, they don't have like franchises that like are homegrown and stuff. So they're trying to sort of pull on things like, hey, will Lord of the Rings work? Well, I mean, obviously Invincible worked and the boys, but um, it seems like they're they're pulling out a bunch of stuff just to see what sticks. And to me, this doesn't stick, but it seems like people are responding really well to it. And I feel like, yes, we're turning the tide on video game adaptations, but this is not the one. But what did you think? Are you watching Fallout on Amazon Prime? Let us know. And with that, bada, bada boom. boom.